This book, I drifted it on the Christmas of 2021, intricate and full of interwoven narratives. It's about a teenage mom. It's definitely my most prized possession in this collection. For some reason, it just happened. I started collecting books that have the word garden in their titles. I think it's my love for flowers and the sun and the seemingly joyful feeling of being outside surrounded by flowers and leaves that made me want to collect and read books that present such themes. Anyway, it just happened. And so far, my search for books that have the word garden in their titles has led me to owning five of them. I'm hoping to make this collection grow, so my search still continues, but for the meantime, let me introduce to you my little garden core, bloom core, cottage core library. Books that you can add to your own soft girl summer reading list. By the way, go few, this collection already comprises many different genres. Here we have one children's classic, one contemporary romance chiclet, one psychological fiction, one historical fiction, and one non-fic literary compendium. So, we've got it all. First off, I got this copy from Fully Booked last year for 380 pesos, and it's quite a steal for our gorgeous brand new copy in this size, so when I saw it, I definitely bought it. After all, I've been aching for my second Frances Hudson Burnett read, given that her other title, A Little Princess, is one of my all-time favorites. This book, The Secret Garden by Frances Hudson Burnett, is about a 10-year-old girl named Mary Lennox whose parents died from cholera and so she's sent to a large, isolated house in Yorkshire to live with an uncle that she's never met. Mary is a spoiled little girl who doesn't want to be there. However, when she finds the key to a locked, neglected garden in her uncle's estate, she realizes that there are fascinating secrets waiting to be uncovered in the place she's sent to. Together with her newfound friends, she brings the garden back to life and that's when her own transformation begins. As it says here on the back cover blurb, this perennially powerful, uplifting classic is regarded as one of the best children's books of the 20th century and I wouldn't argue with it. This book, The Cake Shop in the Garden by Carol Matthews, is actually the first in this garden core, cottage core, loom core collection. <laughs> I thrifted it on the Christmas of 2020 for only 125 pesos at book sale. And the fun thing is that what got me buying this book is not the word garden in its title, but the word cake. Yes, that's right, cake. <laughs> I love cakes so much. I think everyone who knows me could and would vouch for it. <laughs> so, assuming that cakes would be mentioned multiple times in the story, I picked it up, paid for it, and started reading it. And true enough, this book is actually about cakes and a garden and the cake shop in the garden as it says here on the title. It's also about Faye Merriweather, a woman who runs the cake shop in the garden her garden. <laughs> there she will meet a man younger than her who will make her question every decision she's made in her life. Judging by the cheery cover of this book, I could easily tell that it's a feel-good kind of contemporary chiclet. And though it's not my always got to read genre, I thought it'd be nice to add it in the mix of what I read just to sweeten things up a bit. Plus, what else is a more perfect book to read with a slice of cake on the side than this one? I think it's the perfect title for soft girls who happen to have a sweet tooth for their eats and their needs. Another book in this collection is also thrifted at book sale for 125 pesos and it is A Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. This is a historical fiction about a tiny little girl who's abandoned on a ship headed for Australia in the year 1930. She arrives on the dock completely alone with nothing but a small suitcase containing a few clothes and a very old book, a beautiful volume of dark fairy tales written by a Victorian authoress who had apparently promised to look after this girl but who had also gone missing mysteriously. The little girl is taken in by the dockmaster and his wife and is raised as their own. This girl grows up to be identified as Nell who on her 21st birthday finds out the truth about her past and this devastates her and completely throws her world upside down. Decades later, she does some digging to fully uncover the truths about her roots and origin. This long-winded journey of putting together the puzzle pieces of Nell's family tree 
will go on and be continued upon her death by her very own granddaughter, Cassandra. Intricate and full of interwoven narratives, the Forgotten Garden promises to send its reader to a dark, twisty labyrinth of Nell and Cassandra's ancestry, much like the lush, unkempt, and long-forgotten garden featured in the story. Researching on this really confusing and really fascinating story after I scoured this copy from the thrift store, I found out that it's actually an homage to Francis Hutchin Burnett's The Secret Garden, and as if this alone wouldn't make me want to read it already, I found out too that this is a gothic novel. And as someone who also happens to be dipping her toes into gothic lit, this book really is a score for me. I'm pretty glad that it's pretty thick, which means longer bonding time with it. Can't wait to read it. Now this one I've already started reading, and it is The Girl in the Garden by Melanie Wallace. I thrifted this copy at Biblio for 150 pesos. And it's about a teenage mom and her infant son who were abandoned by the only adult man in their lives at a seaside motel cottage in New England. Now, I haven't gotten past the abandonment bit in the story, but Goodreads says that this book is also about the people that this teenage mama cross paths with in that small town. Characters of all ages from many walks of life, carrying their own packages and living their own lonely stories. Many people say that this is a sad but beautifully written novel and aren't we all suckers for sad, beautiful, tragic human affairs? I'm so looking forward to picking up where I left off and finishing this book, this sad but beautiful book. The last in this collection, at least the last for now, is this one. The Virago Book of Women Gardeners by the women gardeners themselves. It is a collection of their works, of their writings, of their knowledge about gardening, compiled and edited by Deborah Calloway. Now, it says here on the front and back covers that it's a glorious and fertile compendium, a delight for lovers of gardening and literature. And having read this book from page one to the last, I agree. This anthology contains works that have been artfully created and curated. Works that do not only enlighten but also entertain. Works that are both insightful and delightful to read. I'm obviously quite fond of this anthology. It's definitely my most prized possession in this collection. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it again someday when I have my own garden and I could actually apply in practice the knowledge kept and preserved in this old but gold copy. So that's it for my little garden core, bloom core, cottage core collection. Like I said, I'm hoping to grow it. So if you know of any literary titles that I could add on this mini collection, please let me know by leaving a comment below. Also, please let me know what books are in your hot slash soft girl summer reading list. I'd love to have some references. I hope this video inspired you to read a book or two. This has been Ruan. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I started collecting books that have the word garden in their titles. <laughs> books that you can add to your summer soft girl reading list. First off, I got this copy from Polyboot. <laughs> this parents die from Corella. Corella, Cholera, Corella. I love it. The end of it. Uh, I'm losing my voice. Judging by the... Judging by the... And I forgot what I'm going to say. Yay!